Back before I was born, there was a semi-popular game title. This game was about exploration and ancient relics. You survived in an unfamiliar environment with only your wits and the scattered items you happened to find around you. And you went about archaeology in a way that some might call disruptive. This might sound like an Indiana Jones game to you, but this was Scarab of Raw. For those of you who have played this game before, you'll know exactly why I drew up the title card the way I did, and have probably been in some sort of similar situation. You know exactly what I mean. Scarab of Ra is an ancient, I mean classic, Macintosh shareware title, which was written sometime in 1987 by Rick Holsgraf and released by Semicolon Software. Apologies to Rick for probably butchering his last name. Other than the about screen, there isn't anything I can find on the exact release date. I even looked on his personal blog, and I've got nothing. Despite the fact that the game initially had to be passed around on BBSs, it later ended up being called a Macintosh shareware classic. Some of you people probably have no clue what a BBS even is. I know I didn't. As for how I got this game, I had actually acquired it from my grade school's Mac lab using an AOL floppy disk. There's a little lock switch on the back of floppy disks which controls whether the contents are read-only or not. So you flip that, and I could delete the AOL stuff and put whatever I wanted to on it. So they're useful for more than just coasters and frisbees or what have you, unlike the AOL CDs that would come out later. There were other games on the school computers, like Dino Park Tycoon and I think there was Breakthrough, but they were too big to fit on a mere floppy disk, so Scarab of Raw it was. And I'm glad for it. It actually kept me pretty entertained after school. I ended up completing my homework for the entire week and a day, so this kept me occupied. I know I could have been learning something, but oh well. I didn't know I was actually supposed to pay for this, because there wasn't really anything to tell me that I had to. Of course, I've kind of stolen it from my school's computer lab, but shut up. There's no serial code. This is an honor system shareware title, so there was nothing to tell me as a kid that I was really supposed to pay for it. But hey, if you're looking for a DRM-free title, you've got one right here. According to the Semicolon Software website, this game can run on, quote, any Macintosh, any system software, end quote. Guess they didn't count on the Intel-based OS X coming along and ruining their fun. But this game even worked perfectly in Classic until then, so this game will run on a huge majority of Mac computers and even emulators. I have it working perfectly in Sheepshaver on Windows 7 with all the sound intact, which means I'm using a Macintosh emulator in Windows to run an old Macintosh game because OS X doesn't support Classic on my MacBook, meaning I'm running a Macintosh emulator in Windows on a Macintosh computer. Now oh, the irony of it all. So, just what is going on in this game anyway? Well, let's find out. Apparently, you play as archaeologist, professor, explorer, and adventurer Mississippi Smith. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar? Also, Mississippi has two P's, so Rick's misspelling it. Unless he did that on purpose, I don't know. A sandstorm has uncovered the Great Pyramid of Ra, and dozens of poor saps have already gone in and gotten themselves killed. So you do what any sane undergraduate in archaeology looking for fame would do. You steal a lantern, a couple of gallons of oil, and a pound of food, and go straight into the place where much more prepared teams of adventurers have died. Yeah, that sounds like a great plan to me, too. You know, would have been interesting if you ran into someone still exploring the pyramid before you. But anyway, being an adventurer more unprepared than Soma Cruz wandering into Dracula's castle with only a dull pocket knife, you hope to find equipment left by the people who didn't make it out. Boy, isn't that morbid? Oh, and where are the corpses? I mean, I'm glad this game decided not to traumatize my, at the time, innocent mind. But there's not even bones. Where are all these other people? Are the animals so hungry they ate the bones of these people, too? But I digress. Other than that, you have to find the key for the next door, which is apparently a warp or something. You go straight from the southeast corner to the northwest corner through a single doorway passage, and you find gold left by ancient worshippers, which you deposit in mysterious ancient bank deposits or something, along with finding animals and traps, which are things you'd rather not find. Your real goal is to steal, uh, acquire, the sun god Ra's three talismans, his crown, staff, and scarab. However, the scarab bears the curse of Ra, which means from the moment you touch it, 
Mummies will be chasing you around every floor of the pyramid, and apparently the power of the scarab is your best protection against the guardians. Which makes them pretty ineffectual, doesn't it? I mean, wouldn't that be like a vampire guarding a holy garlic clove or something? But because you're looking for these items, you have to search everywhere on every floor of the pyramid, or you might miss them. But if you make it out alive with all the relics, you will be famous forever. So this game is Mississippi Smith and the Raiders of the Lost Pyramid. I'm glad it's called Scarab of Ra, though. That's much easier to say. And I think the other would have gone over the file length limit. But I digress. Basically, you gain as much prestige, which is basically your score, as you can by exploring and mapping the pyramid, depositing gold, and making off with Ra's holy trinkets. But try not to die. Death gives you a nice 25% penalty or so to your prestige. If you know you're about to die, quit and start another game and save your score. Unless, of course, you're one of those people that think quitting just isn't a valid option. In which case, have fun dying! So, the controls in this game are pretty simple. The solid arrows will actually turn or move you, and they will take time to do so. Meaning that animals will move, you get hungry, or health recovers. Or it might go down if the cobras have been biting you more often than a hyperactive child on a sugar high would bite cotton candy, and so on. The hollow arrows let you peek in a certain direction. This doesn't take any time, which is great for looking out for the guardians, and for seeing if the place to your right is just an empty dead end without bringing you one step closer to starvation. However, you can't map by peeking, even if your speed is low enough to map just by looking at an area. You can also pick up items at this window. One great feature in this game in the control department is that you can use your keypad for control. Everything you see in the controls corresponds to a key on the keypad, and zeros to pick up items. Took me a little while to figure that one out. It's useless if you have a laptop, unless you have one with a keypad, or you're awesome like me, and you have an external keypad. Great for playing this game. Quick little tip about looking for items or those precious relics. Make sure to look at the window right when you come in the door. Sometimes the items are lying right there at the start of the level, and I've missed the key because it was right at my feet when I enter the next floor and I've walked right past it. Also, you'll have to look at spaces where animals are lying. I found a relic under a lioness before, and under seemingly useless items. Sometimes there's multiple items stacked on one tile, and you'll never know what else is there until you walk over it. There are several things you can do to an item. Use it, drop it, throw it, or get info on it. Getting info is generally completely useless. It'll usually say, this is a plank or a ten-foot pole or whatever it is, which you can see already, you're looking at your inventory. There's not even any, you know, colorful flavor text. But if you get info on the lantern, it does tell you how much oil is left. Using an item will, well, use the item. Crack a whip, turn on or off the lantern, eat food, use snake bite cure, graffiti the walls with charcoal, etc. You use items so often it has a shortcut. You just double-click on the item. So you won't use this menu too much, unless you want to drop or throw an item, you'll just double-click on everything. As you go through the pyramid, you also keep a map, if your speed is 5 or lower. The map is a very useful tool to an explorer like you, so that you know where you've looked, where you haven't, and can keep notes on certain areas. Unless you're like me and never think to use that feature of the map. If you go faster than 5, you will not map and will be lost until you go into a previously mapped area. You can add what's in front of you to the map without walking onto it, but at a small cost of time. At 3 or lower, any place you look at is added to the map. At slower speeds, I think you can see traps more easily, but you get hungry over less distance, so speed honestly seems to be better most of the time, except past 5, unless, say, you're moving through a previously mapped area, or maybe you're dedicated enough to try and make your own map on paper. But making a map in-game also earns a few prestige points. Your speed is also limited by how much you're carrying. The more weight you have or the more bulky the items you're carrying, the slower your maximum speed is, so you can't be a total pack rat. Which is a shame. That's my typical game mentality. You know, that little voice in the back of your head that says, I might need this later. You'll have to rein in those thoughts a bit in this game. The room starts at 3x3 three three on the first floor, and then the mazes will grow from 4x4 four four to 5x5, five five, and so on and so on. The maximum size is apparently 20 by 20, but I don't remember ever getting to level 18 to find out, mostly because I refuse to save scum, so I don't have any proof of that. Speaking of that, apparently version 1.2 had a level limit of 199, which this Rip Ripaki, apologies again for name slaughter, apparently figured out. 
Either this guy was really, really lucky, or he was safe scumming like crazy, because I've never gotten anywhere near that level. Granted, the maze caps out at a 20 by 20 size, but you play this game and tell me the farthest that you get, or if you've already played it in the past, tell me how far you've gotten before. Really, I want to know. I've never been anywhere past level 20. If you don't like spoilers, well, you better turn back now because there's going to be more spoilers here than an Asian-tuned car convention, because I'm getting into everything that I can find in the pyramid, the good, the bad, and the entirely pointless, everything, along with my own personal tips, opinions, and bias that may or may not mean a damn thing. Oh, and there's a hint system, but it really tries to get you to figure things out on your own.